It's your girl, K-Dub. The angry black woman. Okay, let me explain something. Okay, first of all, before I get all riled up, to all my friends who are prim and proper, and if we do business together, just go back out of this video and keep on scrolling. Just keep on scrolling. So I'm about to go to hell off. Okay? So... I am the angry black woman, but I'm always angry for a reason. Okay, so today I go down to the nearest Nigerian restaurant because I normally get lunch there. I order it through Uber Eats. I've never actually been in the building. So today on my way home, I'm like, you know what? Let me stop and get some Nigerian food because it's good and it's vegan and, you know, I'm about that life. So I stop there sitting down they're like you know have a seat make yourself comfortable very welcoming and this guy is telling the story about how at his apartment security decides to harass him okay and of course this nigerian brother is being harassed by somebody who of course don't look like us but this guy you know the nigerian brother suited and booted but even if he was wearing like a do-rag and like t-shirt and khakis like leave the brother alone he said he lives here the guy the security guard gonna try and try and be top flight security of the world not just the city of the world gonna ask him do you live here what apartment are you in he was like this is the apartment that i'm in and he was like i don't believe you live here let me verify you need to have a seat right here he was like okay you know what but let me explain something to you okay i got business to do i got clients that i'm about to meet and i'm not gonna be late for this appointment so you can check this you need to contact the uh, the property manager now and the security guard talking about you don't tell me how to do my job I hate it when a person get a little position of authority and, then, and it goes to their doggone head okay so he was like well let me tell you what I am gonna do okay if I miss out if I got clients coming and if my clients show up and I'm not ready then I'm suing you. I'm suing the company you work for. I'm suing the property managers. You better get somebody on the phone. So the guy finally decides to call the property manager. And of course, the property manager knows this dude because, yeah, he paying big money. But get out his pocketbook because your ass can't afford to live here. Don't be trying to act like this brother can't afford to live here. Obviously, he lives here. Manager's like, I'm so sorry. Yeah, thank you, boo-boo. Now go have several seats, Mr. Security Guard. Okay, this is the thing that pisses me off because like that... Reminded me of me being at my apartment. Okay, I live in Northridge, and this ain't even the upscale part of Northridge. Okay, but the security guard, y'all know I hustle. I work by day, I hustle by night, I will rest when I'm rich. Okay, and so, like, when I get home, sometimes I'm too tired to get out of the car and actually go in the house. So, especially when it's cold outside. So, I let my seat back. I'm taking me a little nap, and the security guard gonna come tapping on my window. Oh, what you want? I'm in my assigned parking space. He was like, you can't sleep in your car. Oh, yes, I am going to sleep in my car. You're not going to tell me that I can't sleep in my car. I pay $1,800 a month for rent up in this place. And I don't even have central heat and air. But what I do have is an assigned parking space. You're not going to tell me that I can't sleep in my car in my par assigned parking space. It's not like I popped a tent up in my assigned parking space. I'm in my car in my assigned parking space. He's like, what apartment do you live in? I told him what apartment I live in. I ain't going to tell y'all what apartment I live in because I don't want nobody trying to stalk me and stuff. But I told the guy what apartment I live in. I'm like, listen, if you need to check with the property managers, you need to check with the property managers, but you better not tap on this window now another time. Okay? Don't, don't, don't come to this window no more because he came twice. Tell me he don't know for sure that I live here. Okay, what you know and don't know. I, what I do know and what you about to know is that you better not come tap on this window now another time. You know, so he left me alone and everything. But you know what the reality is? Folks was talking about it was a post-racial America when President Barack Obama got elected in 2008 when he got elected again in 2012. Folks thought racism was dead in America. Folks talking about colorblindness and that. And I don't see color and this and that. First of all, you got to understand it's a privilege for you to not see color. Okay? I can't not see color. Why? Because I'm black and I experience my color on a daily basis. And for somebody to say I don't see color is a goddamn lie, first of all. Second of all, it shows your privilege up. Pick that up. Your privilege is showing. Okay, and the reality is for the eight years that President Barack Obama was in office, folks was just waiting. And actually, some of them weren't even waiting quietly because they was drawing pictures of monkeys and like over-exaggerated booties and ears and all types of stuff and had all kind of things to complain about President Barack Obama, his beige suit, talking about uh, 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 Michelle Obama wearing a sleeveless top. Then you start rolling back the tapes and seeing, oh, all these other first ladies wore sleeveless shirts. But now it's a problem when, 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 when the black woman does it. But nevertheless, Less. Folks have been waiting for the opportune time to show their true colors. And and Donald fucking Trump getting elected to office is the is the catalyst that they needed to be able to show themselves again. And they showing it. 
They showing their racism. You know what I mean? And like, we're not going to just take this shit sitting down lightly. I told the brother, I said, you know what? You should have taken out your phone and recorded this. Somebody should have paid. That brother should have loved whoever was messing with you in your apartment complex should have lost his job or you need to move him to a different post because this is not okay. He was like, I'm seeing other people of other races go in and out the building. He's not stopping them, but he stopped me. Problem. He was like, I was suited and tight. But even if you wasn't, brother, you should not have to do that. Okay, you shouldn't have to be harassed by a security officer who doesn't believe that you can afford to live in the apartment building that you live in. Because that's really what it boils down to. You know that you can't afford to live here. So you figure this this African brother shouldn't be able to afford to live here. Get your money right. He getting his money right. You're not going to make him miss out on his money because your money ain't right enough for you to be able to live in the apartment that he lives in. Okay, now this is the thing. Far too often, black people are way too forgiving. We are way too forgiving. We're way too accepting of the bullshit that we deal with. We're like, oh, it's okay, and we shrug it off. And It's not okay. It's not okay, okay? And the buck needs to stop now. We need to stop that shit from happening, okay? And the only way that we're going to stop this shit from happening is by doing something and saying something every time some shit goes down, okay? First of all, we need to be aware of the shit when it's going down. You know, a lot of, oh, I don't want to play the race card. No, it's the card. It's the card. I'm looking at the card. It says race. It's the race card. Play that bad boy. Okay? And you know what? The thing is, like, I'm a professional in my job and whatever, and people expect me to be professional 24-7. But guess what? President Donald Trump ain't, ain't professional 24-7. Those cops who are shooting us dead in the street ain't professional 24-7. Why the hell I got to be professional 24-7? Oh, because I'm black. I got to work twice as hard to get half as far. I'm already doing that, and I'm not going to be professional when I'm also experiencing racism and injustice right here in America. My ancestors built this land. Okay? It's more mine than it is yours. We work for this shit. So I'm not going to calm down. I'm not going to be professional 24-7. I got some shit I need to get off my chest. And y'all not going to have me with no high blood pressure, no stroke, no heart attacks, or none of that stuff because I'm trying to bottle that stuff in and hold it in. No, I'm not holding it in no more. Okay? When I'm pissed off, I'm going to let y'all know I'm pissed the hell off. And either change is going to happen or I'm going to be fighting for change to happen. And before somebody come knocking on my door talking about I'm making terrorist threats, I ain't making no terrorist threats, okay? I'm going to be fighting within the systems that exist already to get just and fair treatment in America, okay? I'm a citizen. I was born here. I have a passport and a birth certificate to prove it. And you're going to treat me with some respect like I'm an American because that's what I am.